Today I'm going to be comparing Virtual Desktop and Oculus Link and tell you my opinion. I've spent over 100 hours on the Rift S and over 130 hours on the Quest 2 just on SteamVR, not including the Oculus software. If you want to use a free software, I'll leave a link in the description for ALVR. It's a bit more complicated to get set up, but it's free. From my experience, Virtual Desktop is what I would rather use. This is a consensus with my friends as well. If you told me this before I got my Quest 2, I wouldn't have believed you, but it's true. I plan on demonstrating how Virtual Desktop is better in this video through these main categories. Visual quality, delay, setup, comfort, and miscellaneous features. Maybe at the end you can form your own opinion. There is a lot of confusion out there and people don't seem to understand your internet download speed from your ISP doesn't impact Virtual Desktop streaming to your Quest 2. Virtual Desktop only uses the internet to check the license to confirm you own the app. All that matters is the speed of your router. I've tried both the official link cable and an SMN high-speed Oculus USB cable from Amazon and from my experience, just get the cheaper one. When it comes to settings, I've done a lot of tinkering and I found out these to work the best and they will be what I generally base my tests on. When it comes to virtual desktop, I have everything maxed out. It looks so good. You can get better performance if you lower things, but it's great maxed out and I don't really feel like I miss out on anything. When it comes to my network setup, I have a Netgear Orbi RBK50 AC3000 tri-band Wi-Fi system running Wi-Fi 5 with two access points around the house. My computer is plugged into the router with a Cat6 Ethernet cable and I generally play in the same room. Sometimes I go outside and play for the extra space. Today I accidentally played with my computer using Wi-Fi and not Ethernet and honestly it was fine. Maybe a little bit less smooth. When it comes to the Oculus Link cable, I set it to 90Hz and then I usually set it between 1.1x and 1.3x resolution scaling. I find that's a good balance between quality and artifacting. I max it out to 1.7x and honestly it's playable but almost worth it for the quality but the artifacting gets out of control and it significantly detracts from the game, but it looks amazing. I'm recording my Quest 2 screen via SideQuest so you can see what I see. That's why it might look a bit weird. You'll also be able to see what settings I'm using at any given time on screen. Now to the comparison. When it comes to visual quality, in virtual desktop, I can't see the compression at all. It's like playing native Quest games. There's black bars on the edges of your view. When you move your head really quickly, you stop noticing it after a bit and it gets better once the game loads in. There's no artifacting or visible compression. You start getting issues the further you get from your router. I'd say every one meter, especially the black bars, even with high speed access points. I accidentally tried it with my computer using Wi-Fi today and not Ethernet and it was honestly fine. This is on virtual desktop with a computer plugged in via ethernet with normal gameplay movement. As you can see, it's a little bit noticeable on the edges. This is virtual desktop with super fast movement with the computer plugged in via Ethernet. You never move like this in real gameplay, but I thought it was important to show it. Once you start going crazy, it really starts to lose it. This is what it looks like with virtual desktop with my computer on Wi-Fi and just normal movements. As you can see, you stop noticing it, just general gameplay, but it is mildly worse. This is what it looks like when you go crazy with Wi-Fi, it just completely loses it. This is what it looks like on Oculus Link with 1.7x with regular gameplay. You can't really see the artifacting and issues, but you can see how much better the black borders are. This is 1.7 going crazy. This is 1.3x gameplay on Link. As you can see, there are basically no black borders. It's very seamless. This is 1.3x going absolutely crazy. Even with the crazy movement, the black borders are pretty much unnoticeable. Link has visible compression, especially when things are moving over 5 meters away. It looks like watching a badly compressed video. There is also visible ghosting. You really notice it and you don't just get used to it. The colors also look more mute and less appealing, but I wouldn't factor that into the decision. From my understanding, USB-C on the Quest 2 is USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 and is more than capable of delivering 90Hz to both displays at no compression and Oculus are committed to making it better and they have been through up updates in the last couple of months. I've seen lots of improvements in the last year, especially with update 23. I also factored in manually changing the bitrate. That said, virtual desktop has overall better visual quality. I played the whole of Lone Echo on Oculus Link, and when I went back to virtual desktop, I realized what I was missing. It's so much more crisp. Now when it comes to the delay, on virtual desktop, 
I don't notice a delay at all. When it comes to link, I don't really notice a delay either. It might be a better on the link, but it's just way too close to call. Again, if you told me the latency was indistinguishable when I first got my headset, I wouldn't have believed you, but it is. You really can't really tell the difference between virtual desktop and Oculus Link latency. Now when it comes to setup and ease of use, on virtual desktop, you just open the app, connect to PC, then open Steam VR, launch games or whatever you want. There's a glitch 10% of the time where it gets stuck on connect to PC, but you just have to quit and restart the app. There is also no limit to your play space. You can go outside in a giant space, which is great. Some Oculus exclusive games are a bit of trouble get working on virtual desktop, but for the most part, they are fine and you get them going with a bit of tinkering. Now when it comes to Link, it involves plugging the cable into the PC and the headset and then opening the Link cable on the headset. The cable unplugs sometimes. I thought it was important to mention that it's annoying enough where it detracts from the overall experience. Generally, it's more difficult to get things going on the Oculus software. Opening Steam VR becomes a hassle, even doing it 100 plus times. I find I always have to end up using my computer for some minute thing, whereas on Virtual Desktop, everything feels baked into the app and the experience. Virtual Desktop wins this category easily. It's so much faster to just open the app. It's also a much more hassleless experience. On Link, you have to plug things in and use the Oculus software, which is annoying. Also, Oculus is apparently working on an overhaul for the Link UI, which is long overdue. But that said, virtual desktop is just so much easier to get working. It might be important to mention, when you're getting virtual desktop working, you just have to download it as well on SideQuest, which might take a little bit of additional time to set up, but once you do it, it's far easier. Now when it comes to comfort, it took me too long to realize wiring the link cable across the back of your headset makes it a lot more comfortable. But that said, in VR, you are constantly turning around and with the cable, you have to snap the camera. I can't understate how annoying this can be. It also gets tangled constantly with your body taking you out of the experience. It also feels limiting with the range as I can't play outside and I always feel plugged in. It's like being on a leash. Virtual desktop wins this round easily. When it comes to virtual desktop, you have no cable. I can't put in words how good this feels after playing with the Rift S for a long time. You can rotate around in a 360 degree fashion seamlessly. Now when it comes to bonus features, in virtual desktop, setting up environments is really cool. That said, I never really use it, but it is what it is. On Link, I love playing around in game development, especially in Unity. And for that, it's much easier using a cable for now at least. To the verdict, in my opinion, virtual desktop is faster to get going, no cable, no limit to your play space. There are black bars when you move your head really quickly. There's almost none on Link. But that said, virtual desktop is my preference between the two. Some proprietary Oculus games are a lot easier to get working with a Link cable. It's a lot easier having a cable to be able to make games in software like Unity or Unreal Engine. So if you're interested in game dev, you'll need some form of cable. Oculus software is annoying to use compared to virtual desktop. You can't access the quest menu without closing Link software. Apparently they are working on an update to overhaul the entire UI, but it's annoying at the moment. Also, it's good having a cable around for side quests. It's a lot easier than setting it up wirelessly. Oculus Link is only gonna get better from here. Update version 23 made big improvements to it. So in summary, virtual desktop is better in every single way for pure PC VR gaming. But to develop games, I like having the link cable. I think maybe there's a good mix of having both, but if I had to have one, I'd just have virtual desktop. You don't need the official Oculus cable, but I'll link mine below. There isn't a noticeable difference. This guy has a really good video on link versus virtual desktop, and I really think you should check it out. And if you want a free option, there'll be a link for one in the description. Thanks for listening and take care.